Joining us now with the state of San Diego is political analyst John Dadian from Dadian and Associates. And uh, John, you were out at the air show this weekend. Boy, it was phenomenal. You know, you got to God bless those Marines. But, you know, the, the name of the segment is the state of San Diego. Think of the state of San Diego for this week. We started out with McCartney, and then we had the uh, the air show, and then the Chargers win. So let me tell you, the state of San Diego is on the rise. I would say so. Yeah, it's a great point you make there, too. And I, I posted up on my Facebook here this weekend. You know, I've lived all over the country in, in my different travels, and I've never lived somewhere where the Blue Angels fly over my house. So um, that was yeah. uh, that was a, that was an interesting experience, one that made me kind of reflect back on the on some of the, the, the things I think we take for granted here in San Diego. Well, here's another thing we take for granted. We were so disappointed last year uh, that the air show was uh, uh, discontinued. And then they came back this year. It came back roaring. Everybody had a great time. But, you know, here's a statistic I think a lot of people forget. In 2007, the Miramar Air Show, our little, our little Miramar Air Show, was voted the best military air show in the world. And we forget that. This is big time here. And I don't think we realize that sometimes. Yeah, yeah, it's a big doggone deal. All right, John. So we've heard estimates in the past about San Diego's infrastructure. We've heard it's going to cost us more than a billion dollars. And then uh, Mayor Faulkner put in about $300 million worth to address some of the infrastructure this year in, in the budget uh, and saying, look, we have to start knocking these things out and put together a you know a multi-year plan on this. Maybe the billion dollars isn't quite enough, huh? <laughs> Not even close to quite enough. Uh, so, of course, I'll paraphrase a great quote in history that's attributed to Everett Dirksen, but a lot of people say he never really said this. But a billion dollars here, a billion dollars there, pretty soon you're talking about real money. Um, the For the past year, they said it was it's going to be a billion dollars. A recent report uh, just last week to the city said it's going to be $2 billion, literally double uh, what's previously been reported. And here's the good news and bad news. I mean, you might think that's the bad news. Uh, of it, but it gets worse because the report specifically says that what, to to cover that two billion, the city has to find a source of funding, and dot 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 that could include a tax increase. Yeah, which of course uh, seems to be the the go to for for uh, most cities, as that's their their main crux, their revenue. Now, John, when we talk about that two billion dollar figure, I assume not just sidewalks and streets, but we have to be talking about those hundred year old water mains, right? So absolutely, it doesn't. It basically, is pretty much all encompassing. And again, I get, I'm going to give a lot of credit to Councilman Mark Kersey that when he first ran for office, he made infrastructure uh, one of his big issues. And a lot of people shook their head because in politics, infrastructure is not a big sexy issue. Right. And so they didn't think. But and and he started. Uh, he was the first and is the current chairman of the infrastructure committee. So he's putting this on the forefront, and that's why we're aware of this problem. We might not be aware that it's going to be doubled what it costs. I also want to give credit to Mayor Faulkner because he made a a comment that said he's committed to increasing uh, to any increased revenue that he's going to put towards infrastructure. 50% of all new revenue uh, will be going to infrastructure. So at least these people are, you know, addressing the problem and they're not sticking their heads in the sand as we've had previous administrations. Do you ever pause and just think as we talk about the the hundred year old water mains and some of the other infrastructure that's been here in San Diego for well over a hundred years, do you ever just pause and think about how they laid those giant pipes using uh, horses and wagons at the time. I mean, quite literally, there was no crane to be lifting these things. It was all done with manpower and and uh, and basic tools, right? You and I think alike. I have thought about that. But then I also think about how technology has increased you know, tr- so dramatically in our lifetime. Think about what they're going to be saying us, about us in 100 years. That's <laughs> a great the way point. We lay our pipes. It's going to be amazing what they'll, they'll, they'll come up with. That is a great point, John. And I think we're probably going to be looking for some of this innovation here as the drought continues in California. I think lots of us are going to say, all right, we have to figure out a new way to get some water. And that may involve abandoning some of these different uh, old old methods. You bet. All right. Talk to me a little bit here then, uh, John Dadian from Dadian Associates with our state of San Diego. Talk to me about why nobody wants to be a Democrat or a Republican anymore. <laughs> well, there's numerous reasons, and you don't want me to talk for the next two hours on your show. <laughs> but the, uh, the, the interesting point is, you're absolutely right, there's the rise of the independents, uh, we're seeing it statewide, and interestingly, the, the, the statewide increases kind of mirror what's happening in San Diego. Um, so it, it's it's really, uh, it, it, it's, it's totally you know interesting. For example, in, let, let's talk about San Diego, since it's the state of San Diego. Okay. Uh, there's over 400,000 uh, uh, registered voters that are in, 
independents. That represents almost 27% of the electorate. 27%. That's almost a third. If you don't think they're going to have an impact on these elections, you're not reading the tea leaves. So that means that we've got some of these, uh, some of the candidates that are really fighting hard for the independent votes. Oh, absolutely. And you see that in, there's only a few races locally that are close and hard fought. Of course, the famous one is the 52nd Congressional with Carl DeMaio against Scott Peters, but also there's a city council race. Um, those are ones that clearly the, the decline to state independent voters are absolutely going to have a huge impact, uh, w- without a doubt. The, the, the percentage I gave you, that's for the county, that's a 4% rise in independence, 4% in, in a short uh, few years. So is there uh, is there this feeling that people don't want to be lumped in with one party or another? They don't want the guilt by association then? Is that why they're moving toward that independent uh, uh, status? You know, both parties like to use the term big tents, but the truth is neither one of them are. There's a couple of hardcore issues for each party, and if you don't aren't in lockstep, sometimes people do feel disenfranchised, and I think that is exactly what you're seeing. Um, you know, people say, you know, as long as I get to vote— you know, why do I have to put up with the headache of somebody sending me all the you know material from one party or the other? And this is uh, this is one of those uh, uh, one of those ideas here that I think uh, Scott Peters is capitalizing on by trying to paint Carl DeMaio as being in the Tea Party, saying, look, this guy is he's too closely affiliated with not only one party, but also the branch of that party. Uh, and so he's trying to exploit that idea uh, in order to, to pull that independent vote. That's absolutely right. That is certainly one and one of the major strategies of Scott Peters. But it's interesting that the statements of both candidates are mirroring each other uh, by saying, you know, bipartisanship and I can work across the aisle. Both Scott Peters and uh, Carl are saying that. Scott's basically saying that, you know, people don't like, you know, the, 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 how Congress is right now. And I'm, you know, I'm the, the same voice in Congress. And Carl's saying, look at my experience with pulling people together, you know, on the things I've done, I can reach across the aisle. So it's just kind of interesting. They're both saying the same things where on every other issue they disagree. Uh, John Danian from Danian Associates with our weekly State of San Diego address. John, it's a pleasure, and we'll talk to you next week, my friend. Take care, Chris. Thank you very much. John Danian here every week at 620 on News Radio 600 Kogo. From Serious but